Hello everyone. Hey guys, how are you? Uh, this is Brian Lamont Roberts um, out here in sunny Las Vegas. Hopefully it's sunny where you are. And if it isn't sunny, find the sunny, create the sunny, make the sunny, be the sunny, right? Um, so guys, I want to kind of cover a couple of things real quickly. <clears throat> so I was talking to the young man um, from Canada and I kind of mentioned that earlier. And one of the benefits of being I is we get to meet people from all over the world. So one of the things that BNI has now instituted, which I think is stellar, phenomenal, right? It's called speed networking on Tuesdays. And so what speed networking is, is worldwide networking, people all over the world. So it encouraged his business partner to move to the States. And he actually lives in Summerlin, not too far from where I live. Not too far really from where our BNI meeting is. And so as we're sitting there talking, he's telling me about how he had a tough background. You know, he grew up in a tough circumstance, but he chose something different. And he's gonna be hanging out with a motivational speaker in Dallas, right? And so we say these things like success leaves clues and, and we give all these hints, right? But it's time to not give hints. It's time to give you some facts. Number one, fact number one. My upbringing was very, very tough. Uh, my dad was uh, very tough on me um, as a human being, and there was actually some abuse uh, involved in that. My wife even has shared with me some things that she saw, things that I forgot about, because we've been together since we were young people, very, very, very young in our 20s. And so a lot of people see our lives and they think envy, because that's what people do. It was really survival because what I was doing was what I had to do in order to survive, motivate myself in order to want to live and in order to want to survive because this was physical abuse. And I tell people all the time that my dad was a combination between if Bernie Mac and, <clears throat> and I'm not talking the light inside of these guys, right? If Bernie Mac and Samuel Jackson could be merged into one person, it would have been my dad. So he's very tough. There was no such thing as crying. There was no such thing as, as wimping out. There was no such thing as backing up. And he was also former military, could have had some post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome from the war. So <clears throat> what my wife actually witnessed uh, one time is something I generally don't talk about. And I had forgotten that she was actually there. She, we were in our early twenties. And my father literally charged at me in such a way that when I went to grab him, see, I got physically strong because I had to, to defend myself. And I grabbed him and it pushed me, he had been drinking some alcohol and it pushed me through a wall. And so a lot of people would say, you know, you had an imbalanced upbringing and I did. But what I say to that is this, I survived what I had to survive, which is what you have to do. You gotta survive what you have to survive and then come out on the other side and be a better person. And so I decided that what I was delivered, I would never deliver to my children. So if I ever heard any side of myself become too tough, because I'm just going to be real, I really don't have a filter when it comes to uh, certain things, because, you know, if when you wake up in the morning, you're hearing cuss words, when you go to bed, you're hearing cuss words, then what's going to happen to you? I mean, that's why I said Samuel L. Jackson. The F-bomb was not a lightweight thing. I mean, it was it was all the time in my house. And to be frank, um, I grew up doing some of the same stuff until one day I looked in the mirror and didn't like the guy that I saw. So a lot of times when I tell you guys, hey, look in the mirror, it's because I did it. And I did it from the root up. I did it actually despising the dude that I saw in the mirror. And I said, why are you this way? And when I really started making myself walk through the pathways of why I was that way, I realized it was I could either be a result of my past for the rest of my living days and live out the most miserable existence known to man because I was sometimes depressed and I would go in and out of all these different emotions. And finally, one day I said to myself, which is the same thing I ask of you. I said, you could either be a slave to this and this be who you are for the rest of your days, or you can choose to live an abundant life.
Don't just preach about it. Don't just see it in the word. Make the designs to live it. And so I began looking in that mirror and I began asking God some very serious questions. And I know many of you know what it is to, to hate different parts of yourself and not really like those parts of yourself. But I told myself I was going to call forth those things that be not as though they were until I loved the dude that I was looking at. The more I did that, <clears throat> the more God began to bless and he began to open doors. And my wife um, had looked up some information on Diana Ross. She always followed her and her mom always followed her. And what my wife loved, because her upbringing was a little tougher too, she said, you know, I love the fact, she said, I choose to be nice. I choose to be, this is what my wife said, I choose to be sweet because there was always some form of chaos or some type of imbalance going on in my life. And so she said, you know, I love how Diana Ross raised her kids. And at this time, it was rough on me because I'm still dealing with my issues. And she says, you know, she wakes up in the morning and everything was melodic and sweet. And she wanted to make sure her kids live the most dreamy existence that they possibly can live. And into that, you could say, you know what? Diana Ross had it, but no, she didn't. Diana Ross was from Detroit, Michigan. And if we're just being honest, around the time of the Supremes, I know for a fact there was a lot of marches going on, the Black Panther movement, a lot of different things were going on in Detroit because where I grew up, it's not that far, not that far at all. As a matter of fact, um, the pastor at People's Baptist was one of the people who inspired me early on in ministry, and he used to be a Black Panther. And so as I admired her for what she did, I began to re realize something that's very real. It's all a choice, man. You can choose to be as angry, as violent, um, whatever it is you want to be. You can choose to like things. You can choose to hate things every single morning. But if you're waking up every single morning, and I'm not talking about success, failure, pass, fail. I'm not talking that at all. I'm talking about the simplest of things. If you can't find the good in anything, you go on a vacation, man, and you're just miserable. You sitting out by the beach and you just complaining because somebody said something to you or something happened in this kind of way. And that, my friend, was me. I was controlled by everyone else's words. What they said, what they did, as though I was going to see those people for the rest of my life. And I was actually a slave to my environment. I was a slave to my anger. I was a slave to my emotion. I was a slave to my frustration. I couldn't get the right words out. I'm cussing all the time. I'm doing all kinds of things that I don't even love about myself. And so what I learned, there used to be a time, because this is how you know when you're abused. There used to be a time, I wouldn't hold this conversation with anyone. I wouldn't talk about it to anyone because it was my private business. And that's one of the reasons why I used to explode because I didn't think I was worth it. I didn't think my life was worth it. I just did not care. And you never want to fight a person who doesn't care because when they don't care, they'll pull out all the stops. And that was me in my anger. So I hated this dude. I couldn't stand the way this dude reacted because he was so used to survival. That was his mechanism, man, I'm gonna survive. This is what I'm gonna do. The whole tough guy routine. In the words of my mom, bullets have no eyes. Stray bullets have no eyes. So naturally, when I got to the point where my wife needed a promoter and we couldn't afford a promoter, I wasn't scared to go into everybody's neighborhood. Did not matter what city it was in, did not matter what state it was in, didn't matter where we were. Even if I was a little bit fearful, I'd get over it in the first few minutes. Different territories, different gangs, different everything. And I wore clothing similar to what you see now, except they didn't have words on it. It would just be blacked out. And I kept my eyes straight when I would deliver flyers. And we did this for years out of necessity. We did this when we were broke. We did this when we were broken. We did this regardless because it wasn't about where we were and what we were living. It was about where we were going. I had that conversation with a young man today and he told me 
that his father was military, but his mom was messed up in gangs. And he had spent some time in Sussex in the UK. And if you know anything about the UK, there's some rough parts to the UK too. And when he said it to me, I go, wow, so you really made that choice, huh? And what we share in common is the fact that because they were talking about, you know, I was coming from bad past and in the BNI meeting, I raised my hand like, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I've been there, been there, done that. Because the last thing I'm going to do is lie to you and tell you that I'm somebody that I'm not, you know, or I came from something that I did not. The positivity, the eloquence of speech, all of the things that you see and hear in me are 100 percent authentic, but they're 100 percent who I had to evolve into becoming. Because if I didn't evolve into becoming this guy, man, I was going to clock out. I was going to be somebody I didn't want to be. And that, my friend, <clears throat> is the definition of a curse. A curse is when you're living something that's not really you. You haven't given yourself a real chance to live yet. You haven't given yourself a chance to survive yet. You're just living out that curse, right? That's a curse, the thing that was passed down to you. And that's why I talk about iniquity versus sin, right? Sin is what I do, how I react. And so what the world judges you on is your sin, what you did. But what the world doesn't do is take the time to peel back the layers and say, what brought you to this place? Who abused you? Who raped you? Who mistreated you? Who abused, you know, who, who beat you? How did you get to this place where you're so involved in crime and anger and violence? I never turned to crime, but I never thought I was better than anyone who did because my coping mechanism wasn't that good. So when you see the positivity and when you hear those things in me, I want you to know they are 1000% real, but not only are they real, you too can make that change. You just got to decide to make that change. So let me tell you something that I learned in the BNI meeting that I thought was really, really cool. What's really cool is we have speed networking in our BNI meeting right now. That's chapters all over the world, right? And here this gentleman sits from Saskatchewan, headed back to Saskatchewan, and he's about, he's creating a video right now because he did purchase some new me from me. And he contacts me and says, man, this stuff is fire, buddy. I'm mentally clear. I'm focused. I'm alert. He said, maybe this could be the thing that I'm looking for. And that, my friend, is what happens because I told you myself that when Ronan Brown came to me, I was looking for something. I knew I was looking for something, but I knew it didn't it didn't exist everywhere. You can go to GNC. You can blow all that money. And that's what I'm talking about when I say your money is an opportunity seeker. You can run to GNC and get the quickie. You can run to Walgreens and pick up the quickie. You can go to Walmart and pick up the quickie. You can try to find knockoffs. You can try to find versions of everything. I know people that as soon as you say a word, they're going to try to find the knockoff basic brand of that same thing. That, my friend, is the genius of what we have in manufacturing with Stephen K. Scott. This company manufactures new me. This is not some, some game. They actually manufacture it, right? And so when we talk about the technology, it is really a breakthrough technology. It's something that they're bringing to the market. So your friends can go out there and get every other version of glutathione that they want to get However, what they're going to find is there is no such thing as a glutathione pill that will give you the same amount of energy, nutrition, vitality of the actual bottle of the NutraSwish. And so here I sit with a gentleman from Saskatchewan who just happened to be in my BNI group, my Business Networking International group. Um, just so you know with BNI, guys, think of it like this. You don't have to go and plant new seeds because these seeds have already risen to the top. Their roots are rooted in the ground very, very, very well. I asked him how long he'd been in BNI. He said he's basically a freshman in it. He's been at it for about a year and a half. But you know what? At 26 years old, he's already on his way because he was willing to work for someone for free. Now he's an executive growth coordinator for a company. And we're about to use some of their services. And I love a lot of what they have to offer. Because at the end of the day, guys, that's what it's all about. 
So when I talk about your opportunity seekers, I literally get that from Business Networking International because I spent so many years in it and I was president of my chapter all the way back to 2013. And I know what it can do. I know how it can do what it can do. But what's even more phenomenal is back when I sold cars with BNI, I was limited. I couldn't sell worldwide. I could only sell within all 50 states in the union. And so BNI can only help me so much. But now I can sell anywhere that knew me is. And that's 22 different countries. And we know that Canada is one of them, right? So here's the thing, my friends. <clears throat> My question to you is, who do you want to be? Do you want to be the person who reinvents the wheel? Or would you like to listen to some of the guidance of some of the things that I know to be true? Some of the things that I know will get you where you want to be. I've already walked that path. I've already done that thing. I don't need the money. I'm doing it to help you. You, my friend, are my investment. And so this video isn't for everyone. If you don't like the video, you feel like the video has been long-winded or whatever it is you think, guess what? It's because it wasn't for you. I was called to this moment. God called me to this moment. And I wanna make sure anybody that goes through what I went through, I wanna make sure they do not slip through those cracks. God bless.